My name is uh, Thorsten Rake. I'm uh, at QSC. We're a partner of Neptune, and I'm the head of retail and innovation. And some of you might know the retail sector, and you might ask yourself, retail and innovation? How does that get together? And trust me, I, I, I thought the same thing when I, when I got that job, and I thought, retail, innovation, okay. We just saw one of the cases which are innovative for retail. And, um, but it's there. We are innovating retail in, in many areas. And this project we would like to introduce today started exactly one year ago when we, when we were here at the Neptune Summit. And uh, Ola Andre shared his vision about Planet Nine. And we immediately thought, that's the platform. Exactly, that's the platform for what we're trying to accomplish. So we had talks over, over the night and then over the year. And so we got together as a QSC, Einer and Neptune and basically thought about implementing a very light, open and easy to adapt point of sale solution. We, we talk a lot to our retail customers and uh, various areas, CIOs, but also people within the store. And the point of sale solution has always been a pain in the back for the guys who are using it out there, but also for the IT guys who has to run them. So, Sindra gonna gonna show us today our idea on building a point of sale solution called POS9 on Planet9. Please give a big hand for Sindra Stabe. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, as Torsten said, my name is Sindre Stabel from the company Einer, and I will be giving you a demo of the POS9 solution. And even though that is a retail solution, I really think it will be interesting for all of you because we will be showing some of the things we can do with the new Planet9 platform. So let me start by giving you a brief history lesson on POS systems. So the first mechanical cash register was actually invented by a guy called James Ritty back in 1879. And in, he invented this machine in order to keep track of cash sales transactions and to prevent his employees from stealing cash. And this machine was so incredibly successful that for the next 100 years, it completely dominated retail stores all over the world. And it was not until the 1970s that something came to replace it. And that was the first computerized POS systems. And probably by today's standards, uh, the first systems would be like glorified calculators. But in reality, they came with the possibility to store articles and prices. So that was an important thing. And in addition, and those systems back then were actually always online. It was a single system just connected using terminals. And in the 1980s, the personal computer arrived. And the PC uh, quickly uh, became uh, what most software moved on to, and especially for the POS systems. And the reason was that it was a lot cheaper, the PCs were cheaper, and it was also a lot easier to connect various devices to the PC. But it also came with a, a problem, because now every PC was separate, so we had an integration problem. And we invented client-server technologies, and uh, we ended up with lots of servers and lots of PCs that needed to be synchronized. So what has really happened uh, since the arrival of the PC? Surprisingly little. If you look at all the larger retailers today, they are all PC-based POS systems. <clears throat> and that's actually uh, pretty strange because uh, today everyone is screaming for omni-channel functionality where um, your end consumers uh, are expecting the same thing uh, online, in the apps and in the stores. And we have this very slow cycle of innovation in our POS systems today. It's very typical to have only two releases maybe each year. And I would consider those very minor releases. 
And it, it's all about lots of servers that needs to be updated, lots of PCs. Um, and also, uh, the other thing that has happened is that we've put more and more functionality into our POS systems. We spent the last 30 years just putting more and more in there. Basically, basically because we had a system that was out in our stores. So it felt natural to just put things inside that system. And if you put your system architect glasses on, it makes very little sense to put a master data system inside your POS system or a replenishment system, or even in some cases an HR system is placed inside these uh, POS systems. It makes the development and the innovation cycle very, very slow. So that, that was really what we thought about when we wanted to create POS 9. We needed something that was fast to innovate, something that where we could, like we're used to with Neptune software, where we could just add new applications, new functionality really fast, adapt it to particular customer demands. The other thing was we needed to build a POS system that was built to interface with the back end. Most POS systems, for some reason, <laughs> are built to be standalone systems, and no large retailers have a POS system as a standalone system. You want your articles and prices to, to reside inside your ERP backend and a lot of other data. And in addition, with, with the Planet 9 platform, we found a way to do this, and we got a lot of other benefits as well, like being able to run on pretty much any device. So what does the Planet 9 system or the POS system look like? It's based on a Planet 9 core. So everything is running on a cloud, um, and we have our own database where we synchronize data from our backend, articles and prices, to the Planet 9 master data no, database. We also have the luxury of having an offline database out on the client side. And I heard Beaconstock was mentioning offline first. We are doing exactly the same thing. So all sales, sales receipts, are treated as offline. We're storing them for a few milliseconds in the, in the uh, local database, and then just send them whenever we have a connection. They are sent to our main uh, database. And this is, uh, in reality, they're always sent, uh, so you won't really see them, but that's the way we've built it. The other interesting thing is the ERP backend. Since everything resides there, we've focused on SAP first, but really it could be any backend. And we're using standard SAP functionality for POS outbound, uh, standard IDOCs are uh, one of our lead programmers have made a very smart system of converting the outbound IDOCs into JSON calls. So we have JSON messages going into Planet 9, and with a server script on the Planet 9 side, we're able to store those in the database. So we have our articles and prices. The other thing we're doing is we really don't want to create a lot of functionality that does not belong in the POS. So functionality from our web shops or our ERP backend or any other service coming from the cloud, for instance, we're just calling those from the Planet 9 system. So in this case, we have actually been able to use the new Planet 8 API designer on the ERP backend side. We're calling a Planet 9 uh, API using the Planet 9 API designer, like you saw earlier in the demos. And in that way, we can present functionality to the user uh, in the same application without messing up the core POS functionality. So let me try to do a demo. We're crossing our fingers. OK. So what you're seeing here now is actually two separate applications. Both of them are Planet 9 applications, so all of this is Planet 9. And on your right-hand side, 
you are seeing the cashier screen. So this is the cashier, the employee, the sales rep. Uh, that's his view. On your uh, left side is a customer facing screen. So this is a, an application, a separate application we are using to tell the customer what is going on. So let me log in. Okay, so on, on our top right, we have a sort of a data entry area where we can uh, enter data. We have also some, I see some push notifications from our ERP backend, from our headquarters. We will ignore those as usual. Uh, let me try to scan an article. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no barcode. <laughs> yeah, and there I have it. Thank you. Okay, so once um, I scan an article, as I can try to scan another mail, you will see that the articles uh, are showing up and we are telling the customer what is going on. And in this case, on the customer facing application, the way these are communicating is actually just through the local database. So the, uh, the customer facing application is just reading the local database every few milliseconds and it's super fast, so it, it appears to be the same application. What we have done here is to use a, a touchscreen-based uh, customer-facing screen, so we're able to capture uh, customer satisfaction data uh, in this case. So let's, uh, let's just be well, super happy. Um, and this data is pushed down to, uh, we've played around a little bit with the high charts as well, um, so here you will see more or less live data from the customer satisfaction across all our stores. And using this, uh, we're able to capture customer satisfaction data based on the exact receipts. So we have the store, the cashier, uh, time of day, and all of that. So that could be interesting. Yeah, we also have some nice search functionality, so maybe I'll add... I'll just add a bag, yeah, maybe a small one. Okay, so let's park this <coughs> item for a second, and then I'll show you another interesting feature. When I go to this application, this is, I'm searching for a, a customer shopping cart that is stored in my ERP backend. So, um, if you uh, just, uh, an interesting fact, for, for every key press I'm doing here, I'm calling an API from my Planet9 side and calling the, the ERP backend on an API using Planet8, trying to learn these new names, <laughs> Planet8. And for every key press, I'm doing a HANA fuzzy search on my KNA1 table just to, to find these customers. So this is actually SAP data, but they are presented really fast. So let me just uh, search for myself. And here I'm, I'm finding my shopping, stored shopping baskets. Let's just pick one of them, I think. Just a single line. And I will get this into my application. So this is the way we want to have a focused POS that has only the, the functionality that is supposed to be present in a POS, and I'm using the ERP backend for all the functionality that I want to have in my backend. So maybe I can add a part, and I should also be able to pay for this. Interesting, yeah. I have a payment terminal, <laughs> always handy to have. Let's see, yeah. So here I get the receipt and an option to print it or send it by email. So I'll just email it. Okay. Finally, I'll just uh, briefly show you that we have a, there is a backend. Uh, this is our S4 uh, 
uh, with a nice uh, user interface, <laughs> the S4 system. Um, and we can, uh, yeah, I can, I can run into, um, if you are familiar with SAP Retail, this is uh, WPER, it's the POS inbound uh, and outbound monitor. So if I, oh, I'm logged in as in Norwegian, but anyway, here, here are the receipts uh, of the day. And you will see the, the IDOCs have been posted in. I get my sales transactions uh, and see what, what has been going on. So that's the way it, it's posted. I know some people are a bit scared of S4. It seems uh, it's hyped up to be something completely different, but it is really just a completely standard SAP system for all purposes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. Okay, thank you. Karsten, do you want to finish up? Yes, thank you, Sindra. Yeah, that's, that's what we wanted to show you. And um, thanks for Sindra and the team who all de developed this. And uh, I think the actual developing started three months ago. We did a lot of talking about functionality and what should be in, what should be out. So we, we were trying to focus really, as Sindra uh, outlined, on the core functionality we need to have at the point of sale solution, not duplicate the functionality from a backend system in the point of sale solution. Yeah, and this is this is what we got. And uh, um, as I said, it's uh, Einar, uh, Neptune, and QC who's involved. All the people who basically work on that project are at this event. We are here. If you are interested as a partner, as a customer, or just interested in what we do, yeah, just come to us, speak to us, let us know, give us your feedback. And uh, we also have already have an, a, a homepage, pos9.no. Uh, feel free to use it and uh, to give us feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you.